Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. This is week 4 of the 2015 season. And before we get into this game really quickly, I do want to just mention one of the other games we were going to cast this week. Uh, between Epic DOS and Microsoft Deconstructors actually had to end in a forfeit. Uh, Microsoft Deconstructors had some miscommunication amongst their team about uh, a rescheduling for the match. Uh, the time for the match specifically so they actually did end up having a forfeit so that game was won by epic Dose, uh via forfeit uh, also uh, another game we we're going to cast today crunchyroll versus zombie studios had to be rescheduled um, that one did not end in a forfeit but is something uh, that will be rescheduled so uh, if all goes well in the rescheduling we will be able to uh, still cast that for you and get that uploaded onto this channel because I know you like to watch video games. All right, let's get into it without further ado here. Uh, we have on the blue side, Team Amazon Pentahugs, one of my favorite team names, of course. Uh, Amazon, of course, company uh, that helped deliver and helped me find this microphone that you're hearing me through uh, to buy. So obviously, good company there, enables this. <laughs> they are playing for Child's Play. Child's Play is a charity uh, that brings children uh, who are in hospitals or uh, domestic violence so, uh, centers <laughs> or shelters, I suppose. Um, helps uh, them to try and get in touch with being a kid again. Uh, try and recapture some of that youthful joy that we all uh, want our kids to have. Um, so they bring them the gift of gaming and try and get them to uh, be able to embrace that childhood uh, sort of fantasy that gaming provides. Um, and on the red side we have uh, NVIDIA. Uh, they are, uh, NVIDIA of course, the company, uh, makes uh, lovely GPUs uh, for your computers. Again, enables uh, the exact rig I'm running right now uh, and <laughs> that allows me to cast this game. So good shout out to them. Uh, they are playing for Game Changer Charity. Uh, that is a charity where they use the proceeds from uh, the resales of donated materials uh, to financially support children and families that are suffering from cancer. Uh, and they also work uh, to provide corporations that are in the tech industry uh, alternatives to how they can manage excess electronics and uh, just bulk inventory that they have uh, to try and help uh, lessen the environmental impact of uh, corporations that might not necessarily be behaving in the most environmentally friendly way because it's not necessarily profitable. They try and help illuminate ways that it can still be profitable but also be uh, environmentally conscious uh, and some of the uh, proceeds they have uh, from that as well they direct towards uh, the children and families uh, that are afflicted by cancer. So uh, without further ado though let's get back or let's jump into the actual pick ban phase here. We do have uh, quite an interesting pick band phase here. Uh, pull up my official little notebook here <laughs> so I can give you all the details on why this is so spicy. So, um, the bands for the blue side uh, Vi, Lulu, and Malzahar. Uh, Malzahar, as you could probably assume, uh, is a definite target band uh, targeted towards the mid laner. Uh, for the red side here. So uh, he did manage to get Ziggs, which was uh, sort of top two picks for him, but they did get him off that Malzahar, which is something you definitely want to do. <laughs> um, rest, fairly solid picks. Uh, Lulu, since it seems like uh, Wukong um, was something that uh, they were going to try to uh, pick up themselves. Uh, that's the main for the jungler on the blue side. Uh, Wukong, uh, or pardon, Lulu uh, would work very well with the Jarvan uh, flag and drag for initiation. Um, they were planning on picking up Wukong and Nar uh, just from their match history from the research I've done. So uh, it seems that uh, there was a little plan there. Uh, but as you do see on the red side, uh, in the, after the first pick, Annie, they did snag that Wukong right away. So it might have thrown a bit of a wrench into the blue side's uh, pick ban phase for what they were planning. Um, and they also did uh, manage to snag uh, the Nami uh, for uh, the support on the red side, which is the main support there, while banning out Braum, who is the main support for the blue side. So we've got 
Uh, a lot of interesting pick band interaction here. Uh, I'm not. I'm used to covering more just straight power bands and power picks, but this was actually a very interesting pick band phase um, as it went down. We do have uh, in the final picks here. Um, the picks band. The picks are a little bit out of order, by the way. Just so you know. Um, but the final pick uh, for the red side was their ADC. Um, so they ended up going with. Uh, that Caitlin picked a counter that Graves pick. Uh, Graves, definitely a power pick for sure right now. Um, but uh, always nice to have uh, a favorable lane. Um, Caitlin should be able to uh, poke that uh, Graves on out of lane as she does thoroughly outrange him. Being that she's Caitlyn. So <laughs> looking uh, a bit more towards the uh, team fight aspect of the game. Red side is a little bit squishy aside from... Uh, Lissandra, of course, having uh, the inherent, like, faux tankiness of being able to be in stasis for so long. Um, they're really going to rely on uh, Wukong getting a little bit ahead in that build so he can transition to tank uh, pretty quickly. And then the Nami sustain from those heals, um, bouncing them, probably going to be starting them on her teammates just to provide as much sustain as possible throughout these team fights, um, because that's probably what they're going to need. They do have very strong engage though of course Wukong and Lissandra can start off both individually can start off incredibly strong um, engagements and Nami with her uh, tidal wave ultimate can provide that team uh, time for if Wukong does dive in if Lissandra does dive in the Nami wave can delay the reaction from the blue side uh, to give the rest of the red side team uh, enough time to collapse into that team fight uh, and target favorably uh, the right people or if they get a catch of course Nami infamous for um, strengthening your catch potential by quite a bit um, but speaking of uh, catch potential <laughs> we do of course have the Ali a Alistair combo any Alistair <laughs> combo excuse me um, Annie of course typically thought of uh, when she's in the mid lane like she is here uh, as sort of flash tibbers blowing people up as hard as possible uh, but Alistair actually with his um, uh, ability to flash and headbutt somebody back towards the group uh, can create quite a large pick potential even if there's posturing for a team fight uh, to break out he can just flash right in knock everybody up headbutt one of the squishies back and he can just lock them down um, even if it's one of the more off tank uh, targets like a Lissandra who has a little bit of armor um, assuming she does go for the Zonias uh, we'll probably see um, some of some of that playing into effect uh, especially with the AoE ability uh, for the stun from Annie using her W to stun rather than her targeted Q uh, so of course flash tibbers slash W are probably going to be the main source of initiation but we can never uh, count out the Alistair initiation with that gap close, with that flash, and then the pick. Um, and of course, the ever infamous, if you're in the jungle, Nar initiation. As soon as he transforms to Mega Nar, slam everybody into a wall. <laughs> um, definitely one of the stronger picks right now in the top lane. So, uh, a fairly actually uh, standard matchup in the top lane uh, for nowadays. Uh, Nar into Lissandra, so I'll be interested uh, in keeping an eye on that to see how these two teams uh, play that matchup. I'm sure both of them are fairly familiar with that in the top lane, so we'll see just how this works out. Looks like we're going to have fairly standard start here. Everybody just approaching a line of scrimmage through the jungle here. A little bit of gap on the blue side scrimmage, but it looks like the red side's not going to take advantage of that. They're just going to walk around throw down some trinkets make sure uh, they have all their bases covered no early shenanigans we see of course uh, that flash start for Lissandra um, going for a lot of that sustain given how much Nar can poke <laughs> that, that annoying poke that Nar has um, probably best to go with that flask uh, so she can help sustain through the laning phase better um, Lissandra does have Quite a strong laning phase herself and uh, can farm uh, with her abilities uh, with a really short cooldown on her Q. <laughs> As we see in Italy doing a little tail chasing in the meantime here. Um, 
but yeah, it's always uh, definitely a lot safer uh, to take that flask if you're um, feeling a little less confident. Um, and on Lissandra, certainly the way you're going to be flying through your mana, having that flask is going to pay for itself fairly quickly um, if you're going to be spamming that queue to try and farm. So uh, fairly normal starts here. Uh, we do see, of course, Alistair with the Relic Shield start, so he's going to uh, possibly be looking to push that lane out quickly, especially since uh, they are giving a very solid leash to this Wukong here, uh, which you ha absolutely have to do with Wukong now. In this new jungle, Wukong absolutely requires a strong leash, otherwise uh, he can get only two camps. <laughs> um, so, a very strong leash, but that will mean that this bottom lane is going to be pushed out uh, a little bit in favor of the blue side here, um, in addition, of course, to the Alistair uh, Relic Shield uh, naturally just pushing this lane. Well, we'll see. It actually looks like it's evened out fairly uh, quickly here, so we'll see how that ends up playing out. If there's a level 2 coming out here, we might see an all-in. Um, but it looks like Graves is actually defensively posturing right now. So we might not be seeing that even if they get the advantage. It looks like it's the same time, so hype over nothing. <laughs> Everyone continuing to just sort of sit back and relax here. Alistair, certainly not um, uh, the strongest uh, level 2 if you're not able to land that combo. It's a very hit or miss thing. Um, so perhaps there's just a little uh, patience here from that Alistair supporter who wants to get a nice walk up Q. As we do see a lot of trading back and forth here. Caitlyn abusing that ranged advantage she does have, actually forcing Alistair away to miss that cannon minion. Um, that, so that's definitely unfortunate for this blue side. They're going to want to um, not have that relic shield sit uh, on two charges right now as long as, uh, as short as possible uh, if they want to get some efficiency out of that. Again, my support main uh, tendencies coming out here in the commentary. We do see some good harass uh, trading back and forth in the top lane. Meganar coming up here. Gonna try and get that. Some good trading actually back from Sandra, even onto the Meganar. Doesn't go all the way in her favor, but I would say for getting a good transformation like that, that was actually a fairly even trade for the Sassandra here, um, who is at managing to uh, very solidly out CS uh, the Nar. So that's definitely something that's going in her advantage. Um, not, we'll try and keep a closer eye on that top lane here uh, going forward to see if that is actually uh, Nar choosing to try and harass her down as quickly as possible, or if uh, Nar is just missing a little bit of CS uh, in these opening stages right now. Even though he does have a Doran's Blade start, I would think uh, it's probably more he's just choosing to harass a little bit heavierly uh, than normal, but Lissandra seems to at least to be avoiding it, um, as she's pretty much full health here, uh, though she might have used a couple of flash charges up to this point. Let's see, Alistair, good calm reaction there to not uh, overreact to seeing that bubble marked on the ground. Just relaxing, taking that uh, Siege minion. Good calm play there. Studious play here in the bottom lane. <laughs> um, we do see some action in this jungle here. Wukong actually trying to contest uh, Nidalee's jungle right now. Just getting some deep wards in. Unfortunately with that uh, Raptor buff, uh, those wards will be almost immediately cleared out. They did miss one that was a little bit lower. Um, so they will still have some vision and an actually really key point of the jungle, so they will have an idea of where this new is going as Alistair uh, goes in for a little damage. It does get out-traded though, um, Kaelin with the range advantage, of course. Wukong not able to get too much damage in there, is going to be able to chase that newly off, defend that pink board. Though she will just wait for him to back away and just come right back. No, Wukong actually going to continue to fight over this pink ward. Now this is the action I like to see. Those pink wards mean a lot. Some good trades uh, back and forth here of damage, but it looks like... No, it looks like Ziggs there as well is going to chase that Gnar off. Lissandra starting, lo was looking to come down, uh, but actually 
not going to know. She's actually going to uh, come down with this Wukong, forcing the flash there, or excuse me, the jump uh, from Nar. So all this for defending this pink ward, everybody. Let's hear it there. Um, that's some good commitment to maintaining your uh, vision control. <laughs> I will give the red side that. Um, strong fight back and forth there. Uh, we do see actually, um, despite fighting so hard over that, not too much CS was given up. Uh, Lissandra has managed to maintain uh, that lead in CS over the Snar. Uh, in fact, lengthen that lead a little bit further. Uh, whereas in the mid lane, uh, minor lead uh, for Annie over the Ziggs. Ziggs uh, probably shouldn't be giving up any CS lead ever, <laughs> given that he is Ziggs. Um, but definitely not a horrible start. Oh! Alistair stepping on the trap and getting bubbled there. Taking quite a bit of damage from those traps. Uh, triggering on him as he headbutts through them. Uh, so not the best trades though. Uh, the damage onto Caitlyn is probably far more important than the damage onto Alistair at this point. Especially since Alistair's got that heal. Not nearly as strong a heal as Nami has, but uh, he'll be able to make it up just fine. Especially when he procs those Relic Shield charges. As we see, a little buff transfer here uh, for this blue side, giving that buff over to uh, the Annie, who's going to look to make a play in the top lane here. Nearly spotting out that ward, uh, able to clear it out, might give Lissandra a false sense of confidence here. Um, I think she saw this Annie coming. She did, but it's not going to be enough here. No, the claw is going to get her far enough away. No, Annie's going to flash. She ults herself, does Lissandra, and on the return trip of the boomerang, Nar picks up the kill. Great play there by Nar to see that the stasis would end right then, and to throw out his boomerang in anticipation for that ending of the stasis so he can pick up the kill. Very close play there. Both uh, Annie and Nar were taken quite low, I believe, by those turret shots that they were taking, so... Quite risky play, but it did end up paying off for them quite strongly, as that will be the first blood, that delicious first blood money that we all love so much. And uh, Nar is certainly not the champion you want to see that on. We see uh, he actually goes back and chooses Ops to pick up just straight Merc Treads here for their little uh, extra movement speed, a little stronger kite. Um, seemingly an unusual buy. Uh, to go back and get uh, upgraded boots uh, as soon as you get back. But that actually on Nara is a very strong choice here. As we see Nidalee not actually landing the spear on Nami. Just barely out of range there. Almost uh, a great uh, gank there. Um, just point blank walking up the lane with that gap close. If you do land that spear, uh, you can certainly do quite a bit of uh, damage just jumping in and uh, pouncing on whoever you feel like. Uh, but unfortunately she was not able to land that spear. Uh, but like I was saying, back to this top lane here, with those Merc Treads, uh, Nar will be able to kite Lissandra quite heavily here um, in any engagements they have going forward. So he should be getting a lot more favorable trades in addition to that uh, the uh, magic reduction uh, from the Merc Treads as well. Magic damage reduction, I should say. Wukong slowly trying to advance in this top lane to get a favorable position here. He does have his ultimate up, uh, along with Lissandra, uh, who just came off cooldown. So we'll see if he backs off, um, or if he continues to wait in that wave, or wait for that wave to come up. Uh, Meganar is down. It is Mininar. Trying to wait to get Nar just a little bit more forward here, making sure this camera doesn't go away. I feel like at any moment we're about to see a stealth Wukong dive in and ult onto this Nar here. Nar going dangerously forward. They see the Nidalee here, and he will get both of them in his ultimate, and that will be Nar going down. No, Nar making it out with five hit points. Oh, that is just unfortunate for this Lissandra. And the blind Tibbers there, great use of the AoE ability, or the AoE of Tibbers uh, when he spawns to cover most of that bush without even needing to see where exactly Lissandra was. So great play by Annie there, picking up a kill onto herself as well. 
So she'll for sure, I believe, after that, be able to go back, yes, and complete that uh, item. But Alistair going in, bringing out quite a bit of damage. The heal coming out, not actually going to be enough here. They do need to be careful. Caitlyn's ultimate is up here, so it looks like they are going to be healthy enough to not be within range of that. But that is a chance uh, you take if you start to trade like that and do back away. Uh, fairly quickly after the trade, you can always risk uh, that Caitlyn ultimate. Graves actually going to dash forward, try and get some good auto rass down here onto this Caitlyn. And we actually see Caitlyn chugging through those mana pots right now over the health pots because she does want to make sure she has enough mana to uh, harass with her Q and try and get them low enough to uh, get a kill with her ultimate on. Lissandra, despite uh, being both the kills for this blue side, has actually done quite an admirable job of keeping her farm up this game. Um, more farm than her laning opponent, Nar, so uh, even more farm than the Ziggs on our team. So definitely doing all she can here, putting out a strong showing. As we see Nidalee doing a little bit of harassment in the mid lane as she farms that out. Alistair taking quite a bit of poke here from this uh, Caitlyn-Nami combination in the bottom lane. All those cues, all those heals, bouncing back and forth, putting in quite a bit of damage. Alistair, thankfully being Alistair, probably doesn't care too much about that, but again, that Caitlyn ultimate is up, so every bit of damage does stack up until the next back here, so they do need to be careful. We see some good trading back and forth here. Nara putting in quite a bit of damage. Actually going to get the ultimate down. And going to die to the Lissandra. So some revenge coming in the top lane. Didn't quite respect enough of that burst. Despite having uh, the Merc Treads and another Null Magic Mantle. Uh, it looks like Nar overestimated how much he would be able to live through that damage from Lissandra. Lissandra, great use of that. Gonna actually survive. No, Tibbers will come out. So that will be the kill here uh, for Annie once she uses the Tibbers. But the Dragon trade going over to this red side. Great uh, uh, attention paid to how Annie and Nidalee were sent up as resources to get that return kill onto the Sandra. Um, so that did mean there was no smite. There was no uh, AoE uh, mid damage coming in. And... Uh, probably even means they're safe to take this red buff which they actually are so uh, great uh, game sense here from the red side to take that dragon and take this red buff away from the blue side here as Caitlyn gets uh, some good damage in as well now they are gonna see Wukong leaving as he clears out this pink ward here um, so that probably will be a hint uh, for this Nidalee that a red buff is already gone, so we might see Nidalee try and answer uh, taking the red buff out of the enemy jungle here once it spawns. But we'll see uh, if Nidalee was in fact taking that close of notes or if she's just gonna pounce right past the pink ward. No, the um, activation of the uh, Razor Beak passive. I'm gonna let her know that there's a pink ward right there. Make sure she doesn't miss it, I should say. <laughs> we see some trades back and forth in this top lane, not afraid to fight with each other here. Both are fairly long range, so they're using that harass in both directions here. Alistair, good dodge on the bubble there. Making sure he clears out that ward before the sweeper times out. As Wukong does end up securing his own red buff as well. So that will be uh, both red buffs going over to this Wukong. As he looks to try and turn the, turn the fury of his red buffs onto this uh, Gnar here in the top lane. He is not spotted out. There is a pink ward here so he does know he has vision. But there is a ward here. He seems to be waiting on this Gnar to see if he can get... Uh, good engagement chance here, and that will be Lissandra locking him down with the ultimate as well. And the Wukong ultimate does miss slightly, but with the flash, that will be enough. And Wukong gonna make it out despite those turret shots. 
So that will be a kill going over to the red side. Very bloody top lane here. <laughs> From both sides. Uh, that was the Zig Ultimate we saw out of the corner of our eye here in the bottom lane trying to catch Nidalee uh, by this turret. So the Zig Ultimate, Zig's Ultimate, I should say, is down. And that will be Ziggs getting locked down by the CC combination, and he will give up his life to that Annie. So yet another kill going over to this blue side here. We see over here on the top side of the map, uh, a lot of counter jungling going over for this red side after they took that top lane turret. They're going to take the Gromp as well. Try and do what they can to trade back here. And overall, the gold is essentially tied at this point, thanks to that turret uh, global gold coming in for the red side. Now we'll even up the score quite a bit here. Caitlyn trying to do what she can to poke down that Graves. You know, uh, with the gold being so close at this point, I do have to say that it seems like the uh, most important advantage right now is that dragon that is uh, over to this red side from that early grab they had uh, earlier in the game here. So the trades will be slightly in their favor. It's not a very high percentage, but it is a notable percentage um, buff that goes over to them. So looks like Nidalee going to continue to chase here. She, she will uh, inadvertently spot out a few wards here in this bottom lane, but not uh, able to land that spear to get the gap clothes that she needs. We are trying to get the Ziggs and Wukong off this turret but just simply not able to. Too much uh, damage potential coming out from a Wukong and Ziggs so that will be the mid lane turret going down as well. Good rotation. Oh, Nidalee not getting the last shot she needed. Caitlyn actually making it out with her life despite the teleport coming in. Nidalee bravely seeking her out. Gonna actually go down to the Lissandra Claw here. And that's a double kill for Lissandra with the Ziggs ultimate in as well. The last shot from Lissandra gonna be enough to finish off that Graves. And that is a triple kill onto this Lissandra. Now that's... If there's any reward for a timely teleport, <laughs> that is one example of it. So we do see a quick pause coming in here. Uh, looks like somebody has disconnected from the game. Uh, so let's take this opportunity to go back really quickly here and look at uh, that Lissandra teleport coming in. So we did see the Nidalee trying to land the Spears, uh, trying to siege, get some uh, threat onto that Caitlyn. Now Lissandra has got this top wave pushing with enough minions there. So as she sees uh, that there's some aggression here in the bottom lane, the call was made right there. And the teleport started to come in, so once, quick back one more time, I'm going to analyze this because we are in pause time currently, so right now, as, right now, even before that Nidalee uh, was able to land the spear, that was the Lissandra coming in even beforehand, so some great damage here, Lissandra does have uh, the uh, Seeker's Arm Guard, so she was able to sustain through that auto attack damage uh, that Graves was putting out and she will pick up that delicious triple kill yet again. So let's jump a little bit here back into the uh... Where is my jump forward button? Pardon me as I try to navigate this very complex screen here. Okay well I guess I'm just stuck here. I guess we're just gonna have to watch through the pause anyway. I thought we continued here. <laughs> we see some cheeky chat here blaming the video card uh, from the blue side of the team. <laughs> some cheeky back and forth about Amazon's shipping time, about some video cards malfunctioning. Some good natured back and forth, always nice to see. So let's take a look at the items while we are on this pause, apparently still here. Despite reviewing that team fight a couple times, <laughs> looks like we, when we sped back up, uh, we were able uh, to still catch up into this pause time. Hopefully that'll be resolved quickly. Um, but right now, we do see Annie 
Um, has on top of that uh, Fiend's Own Holy Grail just a huge, needlessly large rod. Um, so she already has, I believe she doesn't have too much gold, yeah. So that was a recent back purchase. Um, so she will actually be able to blow a lot of people up here. And we do start to see her uh, positioning to roam down into this bottom lane where there are some low targets here in the Lissandra and the Caitlyn. They do have some escapes um, that they should be able to make use of. But Zig's probably not going to join them. Probably going to try and go uh, pick up his blue buff here. Excuse me. Um, so that Annie might be able to make something happen in this bottom lane. Uh, we do see the Nidalee, of course, uh, going with uh, the Magus <laughs> uh, enchantment for her uh, uh, jungle item here. Uh, going pretty much uh, raw AP Nidalee, which was... Uh, what this will become here as it uh, is fully bought up into a uh, Lich Bane. Uh, we see Gnar, of course, uh, building up towards uh, the Randuins, I believe. Not Randuins. I, Spirit Visage. <laughs> I almost said Randuins, then I stopped and was like, no, it's Spirit Visage, and then said Randuins anyway, because I want you guys to know how my brain works. <laughs> so... Um, Nar itemizing very heavily for the MR. Um, of course, with a Lissandra and a Ziggs, definitely not a bad idea, um, especially if he looks to transition into um, a Lifesteal item, perhaps a uh, Cutlass, um, to try and uh, chomp away some of that health uh, from the Wukong as he will be starting to uh, build up some tankiness himself. Uh, we certainly... Uh, uh, that's the reasoning as well for Annie going uh, the uh, Athene's route as opposed to the more traditional nowadays uh, Morel and Amicon. Uh Given that there are two large AP threats uh, with how many kills um, Lissandra has on her at this point. I'm just going to not be distracted by this chat if I... Oh, can I disable it? There we go. Just had to remind it it was disabled. Um... <laughs> I swore it was disabled, but it was cheeky, so I was actually enjoying it. But I should be focused on talking to you guys. Come on. Um, as we see, Lissandra picked up uh, a Mamorella Nomicon, uh, given that um, that is the standard AP item, uh, first AP item now uh, in this given meta. Uh, the reason we're seeing Annie go without Athene's Unholy Grail is because there is a Ziggs, there is a Lissandra. That is quite a bit of AP damage. There is... Uh, not negligible amount of damage coming in uh, from Nami. Uh, those uh, heals off of her W certainly hurt quite a bit as they bounce back and forth, especially if she starts them on the enemy team, bouncing them to two targets. Um, definitely wise to get some MR, so we see Nar going uh, really heavy into that MR. Annie uh, opting to start for uh, a little extra MR with that Athene start. And we might see... Um, now that Alistair uh, does have uh, his Moby Boots, does have his Sight Stone, um, does not yet have an upgrade on this Relic Shield, um, but we might see him uh, looking to transition into getting a uh, uh, Aegis of the Legion uh, into an, a, a Locket of the Iron Solari. Um, to try and give everybody sort of that, uh, on his team, that AoE MR. Um, that would definitely be huge, especially since both Ziggs and Lissandra, um, all of their AP... <laughs> Nami for that <laughs> example as well. Um, all of their AP damage is AoE damage, so that AoE shield would definitely be super handy to have um, for this blue side. So we'll probably be seeing uh, Alistair, now that he's got uh, sort of his core support items down, uh, rush as quickly as possible over to trying to get that locket. Um, we do see, looking at the uh, ADCs, uh, despite Caitlyn having a bit of a CS advantage, having a bit of advantage uh, in the gold from the kills, uh, given that most recent trade uh, that this pause is following, uh, we do see uh, that she'll probably be able to back and catch right back up as she does have 1,800 gold uh, built up in the bank. So she'll probably finish her uh, Infinity Edge as well and get a little bit ahead uh, of this Graves who unfortunately... Uh, is only able at this point to buy a dagger uh, to start up his next recipe. Uh, Caitlyn probably will be able to get an actual um, higher tier item. Uh, depending on what route she goes, uh, possibly a zeal, possibly um, 
a Cutlass. I don't see many Caitlyn's go uh, Blade of the Rune King, but if uh, that's your style, you like making use out of the Caitlyn passive to get those automatic crits, I can't blame you for that. Um, Static Shiv, um, Phantom Dancer would probably be more common out of those two options, though. So we'll most likely uh, see a Static Shiv uh, be built with that Zeal, with that Avarice Blade. Um, depending on how greedy you're feeling at the time, uh, or this Caitlyn's feeling at the time. Uh, again, we do see uh, Wukong Force going with the uh, AD enchantment for his um, jungle item to get um, a good amount of uh, extra pen despite the natural ma uh, armor penetration he gets um, just from leveling his abilities. Uh, he also gets that uh, armor penetration from that enchantment, so... Um, all those absurd ratios that we see um, on his abilities that already do so much damage or so much utility um, in resetting his auto attack in the CC that his ultimate brings. Um, the flat damage from that enchantment, um, in addition to uh, its penetration, will definitely make Wukong um, a threat um, and able to finish off uh, any of the backline squishies um, if they do get low before the engagement breaks out. Or if Lissandra jumps in uh, and tries to zero somebody out but isn't quite able to. Um, though following this uh, triple kill that we see frozen on the screen in delicious fashion. Um, Lissandra will probably be a strong threat going forward. She's uh, already got the cooldown boots uh, purchased up. She'll probably go back and get a needlessly large rod after they do get the gold from this turret falling. Um, so she'll be well on her way to her Zonia's second item. And Wukong probably going to be getting that, uh, with that giant spelt already built, going to finish up his, uh, Merc Treads as well, and get a, uh, start transitioning into that Randuin's Omen. Um, certainly a good item to have, uh, with this Narm, with this Graves, there's going to be a lot of auto attacks coming in, um, even, heck, even from Nidalee, Nidalee's going to, um, be trying to throw her spears as much as possible. This is going to be a full AP Nidalee. I'm not quite sure what she's going to transition into or if she's going to continue to just go raw AP. Excuse me. Um, but regardless, uh, her auto attacks are something that does a low amount of damage but is not negligible, especially since she'll be going Lich Bane here. Um, so having that uh, Randuin's Omen uh, is going to be able to have quite a good effect um, for this Wukong here. See if there's anything else we can say about these item builds. I mean, the real story, looking at the kill distribution, the real story is going to be enabling that Annie uh, to get her damage out uh, on as many people as possible. Since she's so far ahead with her three kills, with that Needless, with the complete Athenes, she is the damage for Blue Side at this point. So, if there is a way that uh, Nar can get a really good transformation and ult um, a lot of people, if not even necessarily into a wall, um, just ult them back within range of Annie, or ult them in a way that groups them together, not necessarily hitting all five, but perhaps scooting two towards another two, so uh, the AoE is a lot more consistent there. Uh, that would be a perfect chance for Annie to uh, flash over, throw down Tibbers, throw down her W, Q, whoever's left. <laughs> um, and you know, if not, um, of course, there's always, uh, as we look at her summer spells right now, her flash is up, so there's always the threat of that flash tibbers, uh, not needing any help initiating with that. Um, Alistair as well, with those Moby Boots, going to be able to uh, have a really strong flank if he's not paid attention to. Um, Alistair, of course, always can come around the side uh, flash in himself, um, get a knock up onto everybody, uh, headbutt a squishy back, and just watch that squishy get obliterated. There's going to be a lot of damage coming out of this Nidalee. Um, of course, Nar just intrinsically has a lot of uh, flat damage. Uh, so anyone, um, and with the Graves, of course, <laughs> in the back line, anyone who's going to get headbutted over towards... Um, uh, the rest of the team, if Alistair can manage to get a good flank like that, will most likely immediately be destroyed. So, <laughs> as long as he can avoid uh, 
headbutting over that Wukong or headbutting over that uh, Lissandra who can uh, live for 12 years in her stasis. Uh, that should be a free kill um, if Alistair can manage to uh, get some good ward coverage out and get a good flank set up. Um, that's all dependent, of course, on that ward coverage. We do see two sweepers out uh, on the side of blue side, so they're already looking to start transitioning into getting some more vision control, uh, whereas there's only currently one sweeper on the red side here, of course, with that side stone built, and i picking up the sweeper um, instantly here. Uh, but we will see how this plays out uh, momentarily. Let's do a quick check here of the chat. Um, lots of apologies. Looks like they're actually... So, taking a gander, that it looks like they're going to uh, use up that 30-minute pause and then play to try and give as much time as possible. So we will be... Hanging out for another uh, 16 minutes or so. So I apologize for the wait, you guys. Uh, I will be sure in the comments section uh, to give that uh, little uh, jump thing. Um, not just for the game start, but I will actually give a jump uh, for this uh, pause to jump all the way past it. Because I know you don't want to sit here through a 30-minute pause and... Um, even though I'm telling you a little bit ahead of advance of that uh, full 30 minutes, um, this uh, 14 minutes uh, is something that I do want to save you, despite my riveting commentary during it. Um, so, and for those of you who want to say why, thank you. You're so kind. Uh, let's take a look at this map a little bit more. We're paused. We can't. Um, right. I'm not quite sure what else there is to say. Uh, we do have the blue buff up. Zig's probably going to grab that. Um, overall, looking at the vision control, um, there is a lot of good wards down for this blue side here. Um, so if that is any indication of what I was saying before about the Alistair, um, going to have, uh, going to need that vision in order to set up some good flanks. Um, Nar going to need that vision as well to try and catch people up and set up his transformation and get people. Uh, who are trying to go out in the jungle, um, get them ulted against a wall to start off a pick with his chain CC. Um, it looks like if any, if right now is any indication of going forward, it looks like there's going to be a uh, very solid vision control for the blue side. Uh, taking a little bit more of a defensive posture here on the line of scrimmage, uh, given that they have lost two turrets uh, to none currently, um, I think that is probably the best decision. Uh, certainly don't want to go too defensive at this point, um, as this third turret's going to fall, though. Uh, warding inside your own jungle is the most important thing right now to prevent uh, any shenanigans after this last turret falls here in the bottom lane. Uh, they're going to definitely be benefiting from having that, because there's always a chance when you have a Lissandra, when you have a Wukong, um, that after they clean up a turret, they're just going to lurk around in your jungle, try and catch somebody out, if possible. Uh, and that's usually how a game starts to snowball away from you. Uh, a little lack of vision after uh, an objective goes down, and all of a sudden there's a couple kills on the board as well, following that objective, and then all of a sudden the dragon is never something you can contest again. Um, and looking at that, uh, Dragon Timer as well, we do have it spawning in one minute. So, Wukong, uh, with the uh, gold he does have, I believe it's fairly high. Yeah, 720. Um, probably enough to do a quick back. Um, his trinket's going to be coming up so as well. So, you'll probably have enough time to uh, walk on over, throw down the trinket right as it uh, comes off of cooldown uh, on that Dragon Pit to make sure... Uh, nothing silly happens. Go back, quickly upgrade those boots, finish that off, uh, maybe get um, some recipe items for uh, that uh, Randuins, get some more armor, some cloth armors. Um, make himself a little bit more resistant to all the kinds of damage that will be coming out um, as grade. Certainly not one to be neglected despite uh, that scary threat that Annie has become. Um, of course Annie 
Not as scary as she was before. Now that uh, that's not a Deathfire grasp that's going to be coming up um, for her. So there is a little bit of solace they can take in that. Though I have been seeing um, a lot of people who wanted to go Deathfire grasp um, simply substituting in their build uh, an Abyssal Scepter. Um, which would be a good pickup here. Um, it might be a little heavy on the MR at this point with Annie already having uh, that uh, Athena and Holy Grail finished. Uh, and with Alistair probably thinking he's going to uh, grab that locket as soon as he can. Um, it might be a slightly overkill, but with um, all the kills essentially for uh, this red side onto that Lissandra, she's probably going to be the highest damage threat throughout the rest of this game. So... Uh, build, building a little bit overkill on the MR might not actually be the worst idea. And the reason I say that's a substitution option for uh, the DFG is because uh, although there's um, not always someone uh, like this case where there's a Nidalee uh, who would also benefit from having that AoE uh, magic resistance reduction um, that the Abyssal Scepter passive presents, um, just on yourself, uh, if you're a uh, assassin um, who is a more AoE assassin so not necessarily a single target assassin but somebody like a uh, Annie, well a perfect example of of course which is why I'm talking about this um, but a Katarina um, see who else is a uh, sort of AP assassin who's AoE I don't know, write in the comments below whoever you thought of at that moment <laughs> but uh yeah, certainly having that uh, AoE uh, magic resist reduction that the Abyssal Scepter provides um, is something that will uh, be helpful because Annie ha does not have the longest range. On her auto attacks, she has quite a long range. <laughs> but on her abilities, she actually does not have uh, quite that long of a range, which is why, of course, you always see flash tibbers. You see flash W. It's because um, if Annie, being how squishy she is, actually tries to get in range, normally she dies. So, uh, using that only gap close she has as an option with that summer spell um, is typically how she gets in range, but since she has to come in so close, uh, whether flashing in or not, um, she's usually within physically range of uh, the AoE effect that the Abyssal Scepter has. So, uh, landing that AoE instead of say for example a Void Staff looking at that as an alternate um, a Void Staff of course gives you uh, a lot of magic penetration as well which is certainly good um, and it does of course affect anyone you hit the ability with but having the Abyssal Scepter um, almost gives a de facto effect of that uh, because of that MR shred, uh, everyone, um, it looks like at least, uh, ha I would assume would have a little bit of MR uh, just in their rune pages. I have no reason to believe they don't. Um, so that slight shred um, from the Abyssal Scepter is pretty much all you need at this point. As we take a look at the builds, um, aside from, of course, the uh, Merc treads that are going to be coming out for this Wukong there's actually not that much magic resist built at this point. Lissandra and Ziggs typically do not build magic resistance items. Um, eventually, I mean, Caitlyn will get a QSS. Um, but aside from that, uh, the only one who's really going to be building any hard MR is going to be that Wukong, um, probably getting uh, some sort of uh, Banshee's Veil, I would say, would probably be most likely to avoid uh, that Annie stun uh, on himself. But... Aside from that, there's not going to be really very many targets that have a lot of uh, MR to try and uh, eat through, aside, of course, if Nami goes lock it. But again, that's a very small amount of MR. So having that Abyssal Scepter uh, shred of the MR is going to probably take care enough um, to where a Void Staff, uh, like you're already doing true damage at that point. So a Void Staff is a little overkill. Um, and they give about roughly the same amount of flat AP, I think Abyssal Scepter gives slightly less ability power uh, than a Void Staff does. Uh, but it does give that, I believe it's 45 MR? You look that up and you tell me if that's wrong. But uh, the large amount of MR that it does give 
uh, is certainly going to be very helpful to Annie, who's going to have to get close as a short-range champion um, to that Lissandra and to that Ziggs. So after we see her go, um, most likely Deathcap, uh, with that uh, needlessly large rod that she does have built, after she upgrades her boots to the Sorcerer's Shoes, she's most likely going to do. Um, I, I would not think it uh, unwise for Annie to transition uh, for her next major item into an Abyssal Scepter here. Probably going to be a good pickup for her uh, should she choose to go that route. Looking around here um, at these builds, see if there's any other things uh, of real note. Again, uh, it is a little unusual to see Nar um, not go with a... Uh, to just go straight tank, to not get any sort of damage item. Uh, sometimes I even see a Nar uh, just pick up like a Cutlass, just pick up a Brutalizer um, and call that good. Um, it is... It is certainly not bad <laughs> to have Nar be a full tank. Um, certainly Nar uh, has that ability. Uh, but it is a little unusual, and I think that might be um, something that's affected the laning phase uh, Nar had. Perhaps if he'd gone a little bit more damagey, um, given how bloody that laning phase turned out to be in the top lane, it uh, probably would have been in his favor um, to go a little bit more damagey so he could trade... A little bit harder with that Lissandra. Lissandra, of course, just recently picking up uh, the Seeker's Arm Guard. It is fully stacked, but she did just recently pick it up. Um, so she did not have uh, very much armor throughout the whole game. Uh, at least I believe that was pretty recently picked up. Um, so it probably would have been uh, nice to have a little extra uh, just flat attack damage for this Gnar here. So he could have traded a little bit more effectively uh, with that Lissandra instead of just opting out or not opting out, opting for uh, all this uh, just hard MR. Um, again, with the Merc Treads, not necessarily the worst pickup. Uh, having the speed boost of getting upgraded boots early allows them to kite a little bit better. And are certainly already all about that kiting with that boomerang, um, allowing him to do that a little bit more effectively. Certainly a good choice. Uh, and then that Spectral Cow, of course, uh, going to be a great first item. Um, well, there's just a little bit of question in me. Uh, maybe even just something more simple as... Uh, as simple as going double Dorans. Uh, another Dorans Blade. To get a little extra punch to all that uh, auto-harass that Nara has been weaving in. I'm sure in that top lane. Through that bloody top lane. So... Some things that might have been able to go a little bit differently there. Um, but given the way things have shaken out... I mean, Nara certainly hasn't been doing bad 1-2-1. One, and one. Um, and he's itemized very well to deal with this uh, Ziggs Lissandra combo. Um, that's probably going to be the source of most of the damage. Certainly, the uh, 003 Caitlyn uh, with the highest CS in the game right now, not anything to sneeze at. Um, especially with the ability for her to just target ult someone and finish them off. Um, certainly, something she's going to want to, uh, that Nar's going to want to respect. Um, but in these early exchanges, uh, we do see, uh, just looking quickly at everybody's level, um, the typical thing for this point, the effect of having a duo lane hasn't worn off, so Caitlyn is going to be a little bit underleveled, uh, for these next mid-game teamfights, um, as we see, uh, Nars, I wonder if I can pull up, no, I actually can't pull up the details for it. Um, but Nara is one level ahead of this Caitlyn. Uh, we see Lissandra with, coming off of that triple kill is just two levels um, ahead of the Caitlyn. But uh, yeah, we do see the final bits of this pause timer ticking down here. Um, almost three minutes. Do a quick scan of the chat again, see if there's anything else, updates about what's going on. Um... Uh, more more jokes back and forth about whether or not Amazon sells power generators that they can use to get that person back online. Um, so this would be a very unfortunate thing um, if this pause timer does run out here uh, in this next uh, two plus minutes because we've had a very even game with that triple kill onto the Lissandra um, and now this third turret going down here uh, that will be 
all the outer turrets falling for the blue side. So uh, despite that, um, only a probably after that two and a half, three thousand gold lead uh, over to this uh, red side. Um, I mean, this next dragon would be highly contended. All the uh, champs are going to be back uh, respawned in time uh, for the blue side to contest that dragon very uh, strongly. So uh, if this ends up being a uh, 4v5 uh, in one respect or another, this would be unfortunate because um, this looks to be a very even match still at this point. So hopefully uh, in these next two minutes or shortly thereafter, um, that person will be able to reconnect here and get back in the game. One of the uh, little things I can talk about here uh, as just sort of a pet consideration of mine um, is this flask here. Um, I, I honestly off the top of my head do not know if uh, the icon in the spectator version has uh, the little number here when you have charges that are available. Um, I believe it does but I could be wrong about that but from what I recall of just uh, in the game seeing all the trading going on in the top lane that flask was popped constantly in the top lane so uh, I believe it's uh, you can again check Google um, to get the actual number uh, but there to use the uh, flask to its uh, gold efficiency you gotta be frequently using it throughout this early and mid game stages before it becomes a really gold effective item there um, but Lissandra has been popping that a lot. Um, and it's been giving her a lot of sustain as somebody who does run through her mana um, since she's not getting those blue buffs as uh, she's a top lane Lissandra. Um, she's been flying through uh, those flash charges uh, which has enabled her uh, to get to this point. So um, definitely a right pick up there over the Dorn's, uh, uh, Dorn's ring. But feasibly, I suppose she could have gone Doran's Shield. Doran's Ring was probably the next option. Um, so good good choice in the long game there uh, to pick up that uh, flask. And now with these boots, uh, with these, um, with the, these, with this Morella Nomicon and with her masteries, uh, she's probably all the way up to 40% CDR at this point. Um, so keep an eye out for this Lissandra to... Uh, become a nightmare here as we get back into the game. Um, though she might have already become a nightmare off of that triple kill there. So let's uh, get this back to uh, all chat or all vision here. Uh, as we do see Wukong spotted out as he did a little scoop through the jungle here looking for anything he can pick on up. Uh, they will see him exiting back out. As any prances around looking for something she can pick up. So, as we mentioned during the pause, uh, unfortunately Annie was not able to pick up that Wukong as he pranced along that jungle. Um, but she did not know if that Lissandra, if that Caitlyn was still hanging around with him. So, probably the best choice to be a little bit cautious there. Um, as we see Wukong pick up that uh, Scuttle Crab, they're gonna try and hand off that blue buff over to Ziggs before they start off this dragon, which is spawning here in about five seconds. So. With the crab over to the red side with this blue buff. Now on to Ziggs. Um, that should be uh, all the tools this red side needs in order to get in position here to take this dragon though. And it looks like the blue side actually getting there first. Actually getting this dragon quite low. And there's not that many people here. Ziggs actually missing almost everyone with that ultimate. Wukong. Very good use of the Wukong ultimate there. See, seeing everyone to make sure there was no smite competition there. Great play to pick up the dragon. And Annie, with that barrier up, is not going to be able to get through the zigs. So overall, that will be a 3 for 2. In that dragon fight. So that's... What a way to get back into the action. I, I did not realize it was going to be this bloody as soon as we came back. Um... 
So unfortunately, Nard did not use his teleport. He does have the teleport advantage in this top lane here. Lissandra simply did not have the option, but Nar felt that he could not um, freely teleport down there. You get this Nidalee trying to catch out this uh, Kaelin. Kaelin throwing down the trap there to try and get Vision, not able to get the last auto in. Um, so almost uh, another kill going over to either of these sides here uh, with that Caitlyn and uh, Nidalee exchange. Nidalee certainly got to be careful and respect that Caitlyn um, with those autos. With her passive certainly able to uh, get quite a bit of damage in um, if you're not careful with those automatic crits that she gets. And now that she has uh, Infinity Edge and Zeal completed, she's going to have those crits up very frequently and they're going to do quite a bit of damage so certainly nothing to sneeze at here um, as it looks like we're going to see this blue buff go over to that Annie who is now by the way 4-1-1 one, and one, so Annie continues to become even more of a nightmare at this point for this red team here and we do see that turret Graves tanking the turret shot to the face like a man that Graves is, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, he will be taking that bot lane turret, but it looks like Wukong gonna come and try and punish them for this. No, he's gonna think better of it, seeing that uh, it was only Caitlyn there, and she wasn't really in the best position to join him in, join, join in with him on that fight. Uh, they will call that the exchange pardon me for just a moment i'm trying to see what the issue is i actually cannot bring up um the little miniature thing about these people i hmm strange well okay i guess we're just gonna have to play without that uh little screen there so my apologies for losing that here i'll see if i can figure out a way to get that back uh but in the meantime we do have this blue side grouping up in this middle lane here, um, looking to try and create a siege, but unfortunately they are trying to siege against the Ziggs. Um, not to mention a Caitlyn as well, who with that Q does have quite a lot of AoE damage uh, on minion lines that come in a pretty straight uh, direction here. But if knowledge does serve, that is uh, one dragon for both sides, I believe. Perhaps two over... Uh, to this uh, red side uh, but they're fairly even at this point so the only difference really here is that uh, global objective control uh, of course a slight advantage in kills but it looks like nearly actually gonna be caught out with the Wukong ultimate nothing she could do uh, that's uh, unfortunate uh, perhaps should have tried to scout that out a little bit with her uh, traps there to get temporary vision of that bush before she face checked it but you know, hindsight's 2020 on that one. That's unfortunate. Another kill going over to this red side. And we do start to see it slipping away a little bit with Wukong. Now 3-1-3. Three, three. Wukong certainly is a game-changing champion with that ultimate. Um, if he's able to get in there uh, and survive long enough uh, to really put in a lot of damage, uh, he can certainly change the entire uh, outcome of a fight there. Similar to like an Orianna. Um... Who has that potential? And we actually see Wukong uh, picked up an extra brutalizer here. And a man after my own heart, that's actually a build I like to do on Wukong. Just get a little extra damage, um, and then you just watch yourself go insane with that Wukong power. Um, so he does have the brutalizer uh, on top of that uh, giant spell. Uh, which will probably become a uh, Randuin's Omen here momentarily uh, once he gets uh, to his next back here and can actually pick that up. Uh, but we do see the next dragon is spawning here in 50 seconds. The teleport is up for this Gnar uh, and it is up for the Lissandra as well, but Lissandra might just be heading out over to here on foot so she can teleport back to the top lane. No, it looks like she's actually going to head up to the top lane here. Gnar's probably going to be the one who heads out on foot and then uses that teleport to get back to lane should Lissandra stay and try and punish him and push that out 
Uh, but Lissandra definitely is going to want to uh, come here to push uh, or to secure this uh, dragon here. It's going to be a very important dragon for both sides right now. Again, my apologies that I somehow have lost this counter uh, mechanism that I have to see everybody's little description here. I wish there was some way I could bring this baby back. Um, but I just cannot figure it out. Um, but I do believe that the dragons are either uh, one and one or one and two in favor of the red side. And Caitlyn actually almost killing this Nidalee here. She took quite a bit of damage. That will be her taking out of this dragon fight with her solo. Oh, the heal from the <laughs> from the summoner heal, just barely keeping this Graves alive with a sliver of health. Gotta count his blessings there for sure, but that's probably going to mean that this dragon actually will head over to this red side here. With Wukong looking to get some kills here. That Alistair pa or ultimate is down. He did already use it. And no, they are going to choose to back off instead. With that Nami sustain coming in, that should be an easy dragon over here for... This red side sc scumbag red team just gonna leave uh, Caitlyn in the pit for a moment to solo that dragon. Um, yeah, so that will be the dragon going down. I know that. So that will be the third dragon going down for this red side. I do believe blue has one dragon here. Um, or no, actually, I believe uh, that will just be three dragons over uh, to the red side and nothing over to the blue side because uh, that Wu Kong ultimate during the last dragon fight was able to disrupt the blue team. Uh, to prevent a smite from coming out, so he did get that uncontested. So that actually uh, will be three to nothing, I believe, uh, in the dragon score in favor of this red side. And with that being the critical third dragon, giving them that movement speed, uh, that's certainly not something the blue side wanted to see come out of that. As we do see, red buff handed over here to the Kalen Wukong, being the generous man he is. Of course, going to slide that on over. Caitlyn certainly becoming quite a threat in her own right as well. 2-0-4 oh, at this point. Uh, but we do see Lissandra going to take the claw out. Um, and going to walk away from that spear. Fortunately, not quite landing onto her. And Annie absolutely blowing up that Nami. Well, trying to hold back the Tibbers if she could. But once she saw she didn't... Uh, quite have enough damage to just zero her out immediately. She's gonna even blow the tippers on that as she clears out the pink board. And Lissandra, let's take a quick back because I was busy still reminiscing about that Nami kill there. Uh, let's watch this team fight break out here. Nar does miss that ultimate onto Caitlyn, so she's sitting back just autoing away onto this Nar. And that damage bringing in uh, from the Lissandra and the Ziggs able to finish her off. That will be uh, Nidalee going down. And Caitlyn, again, just continuing to auto bit by bit. Going to get a double kill off of that. Disgusting. Ah, oh, that's that was just disgusting to watch. Uh, Caitlyn able to just auto so much. And that actually is probably going to easily be a Baron here. Wukong getting a little wary of that Baron damage. But probably going to be alright. Doesn't want to stand in the back of that pit the... Of course, the damage the Baron does, the things that are behind it, uh, is a little bit higher, but he's probably going to be able to recall out of there with no trouble. Um, so that will be the Baron, an early Baron, well, a somewhat early Baron, um, an advantageously timed Baron going over to this red side here. Um, so, blue side probably has uh, an idea that that Baron was uh, taken out here, as Nidalee is able to clean up this ward. Um, right after smiting those razor beaks. And getting some delicious farm up here. Um, but yeah, now they will see as Alistair goes around on some ward patrol here. He will confirm that that Baron is gone. Uh, and th this really just opens up some siege potential. Though they do have three turrets down, they do not have uh, any inner turrets cracked yet. Um, so this could be the beginning of uh, the red side just rotating around and one by one cracking through this uh, inner ring of turrets. But Lissandra is a bit caught out. They are throwing out the pings here. Nar not in the best position to get to her, but Nidalee we're watching here. Going to be able to just walk over here. Nar does land the rock on her. And that is the spear connecting as well. Lissandra 
not even gonna burn. No, she does burn her ultimate on her, and it's not even burning the ultimate on Nidalee to get away. That is killing Nidalee with her ultimate. Now that is the power of that Lissandra triple kill she caught earlier coming into play. And you see Alistair coming in, getting a good head or a uh, good knock up onto uh, two members there, resulting into the kill. Great flash there as well from Nar to get out of the way of that Ziggs ultimate. So, including that uh, Nidalee uh, extended fight there, that is a one for one though. Oh my god, a great ultimate from Wu Kong, and he's gonna not be able to make it out. Graves will get him in the end. Uh, but that will be in that last part of the skirmish a one for two uh, Which will probably result in this turret Nidalee unfortunately does not have the best wave clear here um, Though Nar can help with that and this turret quite low Lissandra just gonna uh, be brave and go right into that. No, she has her ultimate up. She doesn't have to be brave She's just gonna annihilate people <laughs> is Lissandra um, with that Zonia's up as well doesn't have to be too afraid so now we start to see we are reaching the point uh, where this game gets a little bit out of control. 8 to 17 uh, in favor of this red side. Uh, I mean, we do see uh, of note worth mentioning here is the uh, Abyssal Scepter pickup uh, for this Lissandra here. Um, and it was 50 magic resist, so I was underestimating a little bit. The shred is only 20, though. Um, but yeah, with that Abyssal Scepter picked up, uh, that Ziggs is going to uh, only be even that much more effective here. Um, with that damage, with that uh, AoE. A little bit of cut here is this Caitlyn. She's going to be able to repel over the wall here. Um, but will she... She's actually going to try and turn with that heal for the extra... Bit of kiting potential, and that will not be enough. Nidalee's going to survive that just barely. They will see this pink ward as they have to retreat past it. Um, Nidalee trying to just throw some spears on her way back out, but... Goodness, almost getting destroyed there in their own jungle here. Uh, Wukong trying to catch out Annie as well. Not going to fully commit to that as she was under the turret without any minion support. Um, but they are looking to set up the siege with that Baron buff. Still ticking on them, I believe. No, it actually has timed out now. So, the siege potential is not as high as it was. Um, but it looks like they're just going to rotate around and try and pick up this dragon. That will be their fourth dragon of the game. I do not believe this is going to be very contestable. They are taking a little bit of time to get this going, though. Um, but no, it will not be contested by the blue side. They are just going to give this one up. And with that pushing power... Um, like I was just talking about, about uh, not having the Baron up anymore, they lose a little bit of siege potential. With that pushing power they get from the dragon, uh, from the fourth dragon stack, that'll help their siege quite a bit. Cassandra looking to catch somebody out, unfortunately, Nar's the only one in her face. <laughs> Nar with that Randuin's, uh, and actually gonna just take a bite out of this, uh, help force that Alistair ultimate there. Um, Graves having to retreat away, certainly able to be blown up if he's not careful, so Alistair just trying to limp away, no, tried to dodge that last zig shot at the end, but was not able to, uh, so that will be Alistair going down, despite having gone through his entire ultimate, a lot of just sustained damage coming out of this red side, able to just focus an Alistair down, starting, starting to get to a disgusting point in the game, <laughs> if you can go through an entire Alistair ultimate and get him killed. I mean, this is uh, getting to a concerning point in the game for the blue side here. You see that delicious wave clear potential zigs uh, on full display here. And actually, um, the Tibbers, before we watch uh, Annie get destroyed here. <laughs> Let's see, I want to keep an eye on her to see what that Tibbers was all about here. And he thinking, already having it out, actually? Pardon me if I'm just being silly right now. Yay, How, where, why Tibbers? Tibbers from before? Tibbers, okay, Tibbers from before. I am just being silly. Pardon me, she's just bringing Tibbers along with her. Let's speed this baby up. Uh, let's watch this engagement here. 
She does not, of course, have that vision. Oops. Back to normal speed here. Uh, just sees Alessandra, but, of course, with the full team uh, waiting in the wings here. Uh, almost the full team, I suppose. Caitlyn was back. Uh, but that will be plenty of damage to zero her out. Um, as she has not uh, built that Abyssal Scepter, uh, she only has uh, the uh, Athene's Unholy Grail right now for uh, her resistances, um, along with her little shield on her E, which has been reduced slightly in the most recent patch. Um, though it does buff Tibbers, it uh, does reduce um, Annie's uh, defensive capabilities a little bit more, so she was able to just be jumped on and blown up right there. However, of course, I mean, she is 6, 4, and 3, so never count an Annie out when she has that much damage already um, built up. So we'll see what Annie can do here. If she can still get a favorable engagement onto uh, a couple of members of this team, uh, of this red side team, she'll certainly be able to take out people herself. Um, though we start to see a lot of MR coming in. For the side with that locket finish, with that abyssal scepter, um, with that uh, banshee's veil, looks like they will be able to secure this blue buff onto Annie, um, despite the near drive-by steal. Um, but Graves actually caught out a bit here. Doesn't want to one v one him. Uh, does Wu Kong uh, knew that the Nidalee and the Alistair were coming around, so we're gonna play it a little bit safe, not risk anything. Uh, good studious. Uh, Holding the ultimate there. Um, even going to back away from that as well. Just hanging around with the Sassandra. Hanging around uh, with that Nami. Trying to see what picks they can get. As Caitlyn just continues to clear out these minions. Keep this pressure up. Uh, in the top lane really quickly. Uh, it does look like uh, the uh, lanes are almost identically frozen right now. Um, I think it will slightly be in favor of the blue side. Oh gosh. With the uh, uh, Bloodthirster shield all the way built up, that still did quite a bit of damage on it, Kaelin. Those spears starting to get out of control with the um, Abyssal Scepter, or Void Staff, instead of Abyssal Scepter so much now. Uh, but hold that thought, we do have an engagement breaking out. That will be the disengage potential from Nami, and no, uh, just going to finish teleporting in and clean everybody up is Lissandra with that ultimate coming in despite the shield. Uh, from Alistair, not going to be enough. That will be a three for nothing over to this red side. And actually going to take the claw in is Lissandra. Um, not going to die as Wukong either. Uh, but Caitlyn now behind enemy lines here. Going to, oh, just barely be able to finish up that Alistair. Oh, that's got to hurt. Uh, so that... There's an extended uh, <laughs> 4 for 0 here as this red side dives through turrets. Um, and that will be the outer turret, or the uh, inhibitor turret uh, for the base going down. Alan Graves getting destroyed as well. So uh, further extended 5 for 0 here. And the uh, inner uh, inhibitor, middle inhibitor <laughs> going down um, on this blue side. It looks like as Wukong clears up uh, this wave that built up in the top lane um, and does manage to just barely save the turret wow even denying the global gold there that's gotta be painful um, he'll be able to rotate down uh, with this team and pick up this Baron here not really find somebody to tank it until Wukong gets here uh, but now they should be alright here as they cleared out uncontested uh, so that's the second Baron of the game Going over to this red side here. And there's the Surrender actually coming out from the blue side. Knowing that the last Baron was going down, there was absolutely nothing they could do to get back into this. Um, I mean, perhaps a miracle uh, <laughs> Annie catch. But with this uh, Banshee's Veil, with the MR coming in on everybody from the locket. Um, from probably what would have been a QSS on that Caitlyn as soon as she got back. Uh, probably even able to just straight up build a Mercurial Scimitar. Um, that was far and away the game, um, out of control with that, uh, gold lead. I believe it was, uh, 1,500, uh, uh, gold in the lead. 
uh, for this red side. So very strong game here coming out. Uh, f finding early for the blue side, but unfortunately did just get away with get away from them. Um, and as we look at the scores here, uh, again, I mean that Kalen weaving in those auto attacks again and again and again, um, definitely put in a lot of damage there, um, and has earned uh, has earned that top damage score for this game, um, and really gone hog wild there. Um, she did not get quite a lot of kills early, but remember she did have that highest CS in the game. Uh, throughout, I believe, um, though Lissandra probably gave her a run for her money. Um, she was certainly farming up a storm, and once she actually started to get those kills coming in, uh, she was able to just go absolutely insane. And with this Lissandra uh, going absolutely insane as well, 10-3-9, that's going to be something you just cannot beat. Um, so that will be the game going over uh, to uh, NVIDIA over Amazon Penta Hugs. So, unfortunately, the Penta Hugs name not strong enough to win this time. Um, but thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you want to stay up to date with all the uh, scheduling for the rest of these upcoming weeks uh, in this 2015 season for AHGL, go to the AHGL website, uh, Google After Hours Gaming League, and I'm sure it'll come right up. Uh, go to the League of Legends sections of the calendar. We'll be there. The videos will begin to be uploaded there soon as well. Stay tuned to my channel as well. I will be uploading all the games I cast for this season to this channel. So thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.